Okay, uh, we are going to get started. It's just at the two o'clock mark. Um, it's great to see everybody. My name is Avraham Grohl, and I'm uh, privileged to serve as executive director of JewishGen.org. Uh, for those of you who have been with us throughout the entirety of the Jewish Gen Talk series, welcome back. It's good to be with you. I see a, a number of names that I recognize, people who are writing in on the chat. And for those of you who are new, uh, welcome. We're glad that you're here today. We have a very special uh, program with Sima Velkovich on the fate of Holocaust victims in Yad Vashem's documentation and projects. This is a very important webinar for us because everything that we do at Jewish Gen is interconnected with remembering uh, the Holocaust and remembering the Shoah. Um, and we've worked together with Yad Vashem in the past and we hope to continue working with them together in the future. So we're very happy to uh, host this presentation just by way of introduction uh, Sima uh, Ivelkovich has been working at Yad Vashem for 15 years. She is a doctoral candidate at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Uh, she's a researcher in the reference and information department at the Yad Vashem Archives Division. She has worked closely and she's closely involved in the indexing and digitization of names material from Eastern Europe in Yad Vashem's databases. She lectures on the use of Yad Vashem resources for genealogical and other research to various groups, as well as to visiting genealogists and organizations who make use of genealogical tools for their research. She participates in international conferences and films on Holocaust topics. So we are uh, very grateful that she has joined us today. Um, just a couple of notes. The session is being recorded and we will post a message on our discussion group when the recording is live. We have a number of recordings we're still working on from previous weeks. So please watch uh, the Jewish Gen discussion group and also uh, the Jewish genealogy portal on Facebook. We'll post the link uh, when, these re when the recordings are available. Uh, we will, Simo will take a few questions at the end of the program. You can post your questions in the chat or in the Q and A. Um, please try to keep your questions general. Um, and not specific to your family, so Seema can answer them. And without any further ado, I pass it over to Seema. Thank you very much, Abraham. Um, I'm really glad there is such a big audience uh, today. Just let me a second to make share screen. Okay, you see it now, right? Yes, yes, I see okay, it. Okay, great. So um, I want to start my presentation from the general information about uh, Yad Vashem. And uh, after that, I'll explain uh, how the databases can be used for genealogy purposes. So, um, wait a second. Okay. Uh, Yad Vashem is the World Holocaust Remembrance Center. And it was established as a, as a member's authority in 1953 by the act of Israeli parliament Knesset. It was entrusted with the task of commemorating, documenting, gathering, and researching the Shoah of six million Jews murdered by the German Nazis and their collaborators, the destroyed Jewish community, the heroic ghetto and resistant fighters, and uh, the writers among the nation who read their lives to save Jews. Uh, it was established uh, in 1953, but the first meetings about Yad Vashem was, were already in 1946. The institution uh, was opened for the first time that year, but it was postponed because of independence war in Israel and um, the death of, of the first director. So officially, it was opened, um, as I told, in 1953 by the uh, law. And here you, you see the quotation from the law, Yad Vashem law, to get the material regarding all those members of the Jewish people who were murdered and to perpetrate their names. So uh, what does it mean, uh, the name uh, Yad Vashem? Uh, this is quotation from the Isaiah book from Bible and I shall give them in my house and within my world a memorial and a name that shall not be cut off. Uh, it is very important for us, uh, uh, Yad Vashem employees, researchers, to, um, to find uh, the names of um, Holocaust victims. But it's also very important for me as a researcher, not only to uh, collect the name, but also to understand who were these people, how they lived, 
the information about their uh, occupations, measure how, about what they dreamed, and uh, who were their family members, and actually how they connected to us, present tense Jews. And uh, that's why it's, it's, it is so important for me um, uh, to search for small pieces uh, in different sources in different places and to collect them like a puzzle to a uh, larger picture and to try to reconstruct uh, the life of these people. So I want to show you uh, several examples of that. Um, we keep the names, the names of Holocaust victims in the Hall of Names. And uh, here you see the picture um, of David Berger, who was a 22 years uh, old electrician from Vilna, um, uh, who was uh, shot to death by Nazis in 1941. Uh, shortly after sending these words to his girlfriend in farewell postcard, um, uh, his girlfriend Elsa managed to immigrate to Palestine before uh, World War II started. He wrote, I should like someone to remember that there once lived a person named David Berger. So uh, our goal is to uh, preserve this memory and try to uh, preserve that memory about all the victims if, if we can. So we are trying, we continue trying to search the names of Holocaust victims. So here you see the map uh, of uh, pre war Europe. And so the uh, darker is color, the less names we could trace. Actually, actually, this map shows how we work, and it also shows how uh, Nazis acted during uh, the Holocaust. What does it mean? In Western Europe, uh, Jews were taken from their uh, hometowns, and they were not killed at the same places. They were transported and deport deported to the Eastern Europe to camps and ghettos where they were killed. So uh, during this transportation process, they were recorded. So in such countries like Germany, France, for example, Austria, we, we can trace almost all the names of Holocaust victims. The easter we are going, the last opportunity to trace the names. For example, in the territory of Soviet Union, uh, Jews were taken at their hometowns and they were killed at the same places. And Nazis recorded only numbers because for them, names were not important. The, uh, the, for them were important how many Jews they killed. And um, uh, in addition uh, of killing Jews, their goal was to, um, to uh, organize uh, the humanization and depersonalization of Jewish people. And I'll show you uh, several examples on that. Uh, here, for example, um, report uh, written by, by Karl Jäger, who was uh, uh, as that's a group of commander uh, in, in the USSR. Uh, and this is a page from a report about uh, Lithuanian towns. You can see, uh, I'll show you just one uh, town, for example, Ukmerge. In August uh, 41, uh, he reported that uh, how, uh, how many Jewish people were killed? 298 Jewish men, 255 Jewish women, uh, 88 Jewish children. There are no any name in this record. And that's, that's why our work sometimes so uh, difficult and complicated. I'll show you another example um, of reconstruction of um, the names and fates of Holocaust victims. Here you see the list of um, camp inmates from a uh, concentration camp Mount Housing in Austria. These are not only numbers, they are numbers uh, that uh, in prisoner numbers uh, because uh, they were used instead of names. So what we can do nowadays with the uh, help of modern technology and uh, available materials in archives. So what can I do as a researcher? I can take a number and I can try to uh, reconstruct and to relocate who was this person because only number is not a person. So uh, we have a collection of from Mauthausen uh, cards, and you can see the same number here, but in this card, we already have his family name, Bandi Hirsch, and he was from Litzmannstadt, which is Woj Lodge, and he was born in uh, uh, 24, and we have his street number uh, and uh, home number, and we also have a name of his mother and some details about his face. But, uh, going further uh, with the research about this family, we can trace 
uh, that the family uh, was refugees in the ghetto on Secret uh, Street uh, 34, and the family members were all together, and by the family was with mother, and, and hers was there, and some more siblings also. And we can find uh, the ID document of his mother from the same uh, uh, period of time with the same address. And what is very much important we can trace here, uh, her photo. I think visual image is very much important for us to understand who were these people. So what is a database um, of, uh, of Holocaust victims in Yad Vashem? So nowadays, central database of child victims' names consists of um, I would say uh, two main sources. Um, one very important part is uh, page, pages of testimony, which is a um, very big and important collection in Yad Vashem, consists of 2,800,000 uh, uh, pages of testimony, which nowadays are part of World Heritage uh, of UNESCO. Uh, pages of testimony are filled uh, out by people who know about somebody who were Holocaust victims. They can be relatives, friends, researchers. Um, there are also about uh, 380,000 uh, photographs of persons attached to the pages of testimony. They're not much, but we're seeing nowadays many, many uh, photos because it's very easy in modern technology to send us to scan and to send us a, a photo for attaching to the page of testimony. And it's also very much important. So um, we also, uh, as you see in, in whole, we have nowadays in the database 7.5 million records relating to over 4.8 million uh, Jews who were murdered um, during the Holocaust. Sometimes we have several records about the same victim and uh, in, this 7.5 million in, includes also um, a, about a million records uh, of the persons where we don't know their final fate. What does it mean? There are, as I've mentioned, for example, lists of deportation or lists from ghettos, where we know um, the fate of the victim for a specific mo moment. We don't know what's happened to this person in the end of the war. Um, at the same time, we have also about a million records uh, <clears throat> from Soviet, uh, Soviet interiors, uh, records of evacuees. Um, Soviet citizens uh, were evacuated uh, by authorities or um, ran away by their own inside the country to the east um, when Nazis invaded the Soviet Union. So in this list of evacuees, there are a lot of names of the Jewish people. Uh, so uh, there are about a million names are indexed in the Adresham database, uh, and um, it's available for searching. Uh, these people, majority of them are survivors, but we also don't know, in many cases, we don't know their final fate. We know their fate um, uh, usually in, in the beginning of 1942. So uh, we continue working uh, on, on the records of survivors. This is very complicated issue because of privacy law, but we're hoping, hoping uh, this year uh, more records will be available for usage. And I really invite you to enter to our database and to check what you can find. If you don't understand what you found, either you have some questions, you always can apply, but I'll continue explaining what, what to do. Second. Okay, so in the past, when you search in our database, uh, you receive separate records about the same victims. But about a year ago, we uploaded a very important tool that's called clusters. So nowadays, when you're searching for the persons, you can receive results not by the records or documents, but by the victim. And uh, next to the uh, victim's name, you see the number. And if you're going inside, you can see actually all the records about the same victim. Um, so you can see clusters content all together. You can see all the records about the same victim uh, put it together, which is very comfortable for research. Uh, you can also uh, estimate the final fate of the victim as I told in some materials uh, like list of data inmates, for example, we cannot know what happened to this person, but if we put um, all the records about the same victim in the, in the cluster, we can estimate the final fate of this victim. 
It also gives an, as an opportunity to search for relatives. Uh, I have to mention that Yad Vashem database in general is not a genealogical database. This is database for commemoration, uh, but it's very um, helpful um, database for genealogy research. Uh, because we don't uh, do genealogical connection between different records, we, we are doing um, connections for commemoration of victims. In this way, when we have in cluster different documents, and in many cases, there are different pages of testimony filled out by different relatives. By using this tool, you can trace who filled out pages of testimony and to trace the submitters. And we have many um, cases when people found uh, each other because they submitted pages of testimony and they now they, they, they trade that they have live relatives. So actually, um, this database if inter is interactive. You can apply us by choosing uh, specific records. You can su suggest us um, some new clusters. In many cases, we cannot do clusters automatic automatically because um, people, for example, when they uh, filled out page of testimony, they wrote the information that they remembered. They could. Um, made some mistakes in, in the year of birth, or they could use personal name from home, some nicknames, and automatically we cannot be sure that uh, we are speaking about the same victim that is recorded in other documents in other way. So only family members in many cases can understand and help us um, to create a cluster. So if you choose some records, you can um, look at them, you can compare, and, and see what what are uh, what is the data in different records. And if you decide this is the records for cluster, you can suggest us and send us um, for our staff members to check and to put it to the cluster. So now I want to show you really how to uh, search in our, uh, our database step by step uh, in order for you to do it easier. So we are going to digital collection in the Advashem website to show us names database and what is important to mention for me that our database uh, have a, a unique system that's called synonyms uh, we usually don't use such tool as soundex or uh, other tools for name search um, in yet the shem database it was invented specifically for jewish names um, uh, the System of synonyms mean that if you are searching, um, doesn't matter in each, which spelling you are searching, in which language you are searching. It also can be Cyrillic or Hebrew letters. You are receiving all the results about the same uh, family name or the same first name. I know that for English speaking public, uh, the spelling is very important and different spelling uh, sometimes considered as different family names. So for us, it's really not important because a uh, different spelling uh, of the same uh, phonetical name means for us uh, synonyms and variants of the same name. That means if you would search for a uh, family name Burstein in, in Hebrew, you receive all the variants. Like you see here, Burstein, it's Lithuanian variant, and Burstienova, this is a Slovakian variant, for example. The same is re re relevant for uh, first names. And here, the much more synonyms because, as you know, um, many persons had some nicknames at home and different uh, short names and different variants in different languages also. So you're receiving all the variants. And the same is relevant for ge uh, geographical database that is very important to searching. Our um, uh, geographical database is stated um, in September 1939, that means our borders are for uh, the, uh, the moment of uh, the war started. And uh, for us, that means that um, some towns uh, which were in pre war Poland, for example, are stated uh, in Poland in Poland in our database. Um, in, uh, instead of in, in Ukraine, for example, uh, which it was during the war. So, you, you can pay attention to that. At the same time, you can uh, see the different, oh, sorry, different names of the same city uh, were recorded in different languages. For example, uh, Bratislava 
Pressburg in German and Pozhon in Hungarian is the same city. And if we would not put it uh, all together, we cannot find many records because people write in different ways. And also in official documents, it's recorded in different times in different ways. Okay, so here I, I want to give you an example uh, of collecting different uh, pieces of information from from different records. So if I'm searching, uh, for example, Epstein Agatha, and I receive three uh, results. And uh, if I enter one of them, uh, we can see that this person was from uh, Austria, from Wien, and uh, she's recorded in the database of Dove archive that we have their metadata. And uh, uh, from there, we can see which transport she was deported from being to lodge. And we also have her address in being, and this gives us an opportunity to continue searching in Austrian archives. Uh, another record about the same person is from Ghetto Lodge. Uh, actually, Ghetto Lodge is exceptional ghetto that had uh, many, many records about inmates, which is not typical in many Ghetto Renault records at all. So here we can trace also uh, her address in the ghetto, her date of birth, and uh, also personal details to be sure this is the same person. And also we have a page of testimony that gives us uh, the indication that her son, who was uh, a submitter, he is survivor, and he, um, he immigrated to the United States, and we have his address that gives us an opportunity to continue searching for the family members if we want. So uh, by three documents, we can uh, enlarge our knowledge about the victim and to try to, um, uh, to reconstruct more details about this person. Now, if we're searching, um, if we're doing research about a specific town, for example, we can do all the records about this uh, town. I just would recommend not to do such research about big cities. It's too complicated after that to manage with such a big amount of names. But if we are speaking about small towns or small um, places, uh, like here, for example, I uh, search, for example, place Olkush, and I received 13,000 results. When I press um, the red button called Refine Your Search, I can try to. Um, manage with this list to choose what I want to check, family names, maybe some uh, occupations of victims, uh, source of materials, and, and you know, the kind of um, and types of records that I want to check. This is comfortable tool for research. Now, when I uh, click on the name, uh, I, the such, such a, a window is open, and when I click more details, I receive an indexed um, information from the document. So all the documents with, when you, which are in the uh, database are indexed. That means that uh, you can search all the information in English. For example, here you see the page of testimony filled out partly in Hebrew, partly in, in Latin letters, but all the information that you see here is uh, transcribed into English. Uh, actually, you don't need to search for translation. Uh, uh, and also, I have to mention the data, central database of shot victims' names available in different languages, also in French, in Russian, and Hebrew, of course, and in German. So just um, choose what is comfortable for you and use. Um, two very important things. You can uh, press the button Submit Editions and Corrections. Uh, by uh, pressing this button, you can send us some additional material. For example, here you can uh, attach a photograph of, of the victim if you have, or some documents uh, if you have. If you want to correct the data from the document, we only can correct if it's our mistake. Sometimes we, there are mistakes, maybe in uh, typing, it's, it's happened, unfortunately, but we're very glad to correct it. But if you want to correct the information, which is uh, you think is uh, different from what you know, we cannot uh, change historical documents. We cannot change the information in the page of testimony because for us it's also historical documents. So in this case, we are asking uh, to fill out new page of testimony and we'll uh, put all the do these documents together in the cluster and it will be available um, 
different materials about the same person. Uh, at the same time, another very important uh, link that I wanted to show this is um, name of submitter. This is relevant for the pages of testimony and also in many cases, uh, there are names of submitters in the list uh, from uh, his score book, memorial book, when people uh, wanted this way to commemorate um, the Holocaust victims. So if we press this name, we are seeing all the name, uh, names of victims field uh, that submitted by, by the same submitter, which is also important tool for genealogy research because this way we can see all the family members um, who were perished uh, according to submitter knowledge. And we can also uh, build a tree uh, using this document. Uh, another way to search by the submitter is to go to advanced search and to search really by the names of, of, of submitter. This is very easy and very helpful too. Okay, so uh, this is very in general uh, about uh, central database of Shoah victims' names. Now I want to show you several more um, uh, databases in the Yad Vashem website, which I think are very uh, useful and important for genealogy purposes. First of all, there are some general information about Yad Vashem archives, uh, because it's very large archive um, related to the Holocaust. Um, so, we have, and it, this is dynamic archive, but also uh, enlarge it all the time. Nowadays, it's uh, about uh, uh, 217 million pages of documentation, 133 uh, thousand testimonies of Holocaust survivors, more than 500,000 photos, uh, as I mentioned already, 4.8 million names uh, of Holocaust uh, victims of, of murdered Jews, including uh, 2.8 million pages of chest. How to use document archives? You are going to digital collection and press uh, documents archives. So um, I suggest you to go straight to advanced search is more comfortable and useful. And here, for example, I wanted to show you uh, how to use and what to do. Uh, first of all, um, you can search by name. Maybe there are some documents of, of uh, connected to the same family, but um, I would suggest to use also uh, document archive when you want to research some uh, phenomenon. If you know, for example, that there are no records about your family from specific place, but if you know, if you want to know more general information, what happened to Jews, who uh, else was in, from the same place, you can search uh, in document archives. Of course, not all the materials online, we're trying to upload as much as possible. Sometimes it's impossible because our, our agreements uh, with different archives and we can upload only uh, metadata and not scans, but we are really working hard on, on, on the process to um, make uh, archival materials available to the uh, general public. Um, so you can search here by title, for example, by keywords, uh, using uh, some word that you think can be helpful in your searching. You can search by the place. And here you see, for example, I, I type uh, letters and I type Wasa. I wanted to show you that you, when you type Wasa, you can choose what you want Wasa in general or get to Wasa. So uh, I received uh, some results. When I press um, the string of, of the uh, title, I'm receiving the information about this item. And also in many cases, I'm receiving the scans. So you can see, this is uh, a letter written in Warsaw in 1942. So um, these are very important materials, of course, for Holocaust database. Uh, I have to mention we don't translate um, archival materials, all of them in original languages. So um, in, in, you need also to uh, to be um, to uh, to be sure that you understand and to ask for somebody for help. Okay, so photo archives, it's also a um, very big database. You are going to uh, digital collection and photo archives. Nowadays, um, you can search in the same place photos from different uh, resources in our, web, our databases. It includes uh, photographs from photo archives, from Hall of Names, that means the 
personal photos attached to the pages of testimony also available um, searching here by, by the name in, in the photo collection. And also photographs from the database of writers among the nations appears here when, when you're searching. Uh, here, for example, I search children and DP, displaced persons. I'm using and as a tool uh, for technical reasons to receive all the materials where I uh, have together children and DP. So if I would receive, uh, if I would search only children, it would be too much. And if I would search only DP, I wouldn't receive only children. So uh, this helped me to, to, to make my uh, search more specific. And uh, here, for example, I just choose a very sweet girl. We have very big collection of DP photographs uh, with the babies because they were baby boom and with the uh, parents with children and strollers. So it's very uh, moving uh, materials. And this is really nice to see uh, happy faces in our database, which is sometimes the photos are very hard to see. Um, if you remember the map that I showed in the beginning, I, I want to mention uh, two uh, very important projects from uh, Yad Vashem Research Institution. First of all, this is deportation database. As I mentioned, in the Western Europe, uh, Jews were deported to the East, and while they were deported, they were recorded. Uh, so this is research project when my colleagues from um, research institution take specific uh, transportation and they're doing research on it. It's very helpful if we want to know um, general information, what happened to the victims who were in the same transport, uh, how it were, uh, what were the sources and, and so on. Uh, you can search by the name of the town, by the date if you know, by the uh, number of transport, here, for example, I just searched Lodge and I received a lot of transport. Um, I just choose one so I can see also a map to, uh, to understand how it was and short parts from the testimonies if there are survivors in transport. So transport route, transport details and agencies of deportation is really very uh, deep research project. And there are a lot of information here. We need to remember that this project is still working. So not all the transports are here. They continue to uh, add additional uh, materials. They worked already on, uh, on transports from Western Europe. So the Easter they go, uh, the more difficult to research it, but they now work on Poland, as I know. Uh, another very important project that's connected to the Eastern part to the territory of Soviet Union um, is called, uh, you are going to research projects and you can find it here. It's called Untold Stories, Healing Sites. Why it's Untold Stories? Because as I mentioned, uh, Nazis, uh, Nazis killed uh, Jews in the territory of Soviet Union at the same places where they lived. Uh, in, in many, many cases, they um, killed all the Jewish population and there were nobody to tell their story in these places. So because of that, these stories are untold and our colleagues uh, try to reconstruct what happened there um, using archival materials, testimonies and different sources. Uh, so you can search here by the town uh, name. Uh, here, for, just for example, I took um, the place uh, Bobrusk in uh, the town in Belarus. Uh, so there are three um, parts of the project. First of all, this is explanation about Jewish community in this place, statistical data, and what happened to Jews there. After that, the explanation about murder sites and uh, what happened, where happened with the documents and with the written testimonies and German reports and Soviet uh, reports. And here you can see, for example, as I mentioned, Nazis did not uh, write any names. I'm quoting uh, the report from Azazin Group uh, B. Um, by carrying out a special action, a total of 5,281 Jews of both sexes were shot. The town of Bobrusk and its nearby area is now free of Jews. We are speaking about December 19, uh, 1941. 
So this is the reason why it is so difficult for us to make uh, this work in these territories. Uh, the third part of this project is commemoration. Um, after the war, it was um, really complicated in the Soviet Union to um, to, to make an, uh, memorials for Holocaust victims. Uh, there were several in the end of the uh, 40s, but after that it was forbidden by Soviet authorities. Um, each memorial, each uh, statue was uh, made by authorities and was written on that uh, in the memory of Soviet citizens who were killed by, uh, by fascists, by Nazis. Only after destroying the Soviet Union in 1991, Jewish community was able to reestablish different memorials in different places uh, to put uh, uh, the right record about uh, Jews who were killed in these places. Uh, now, uh, one more very large and important database is Writers Among the Nations. If you visited Yad Vashem, uh, you of course saw different uh, plaques, small plaques under each tree in the territory of, uh, of Yad Vashem. So these plaques are in memory of uh, writers among the nations. They are gentle people who um, help Jews to survive. And nowadays um, you have a database um, of uh, 26, or almost 27,000 names of um, gentle people who, uh, save Jews, you are going to the writer's uh, database. You can search by the name of uh, rescuer or by the name of survivor. You also can search by the town if you want to see uh, who was uh, these people in specific area. And here, just for example, I search for Shaulai. This is a city in Lithuania, and there are 126 uh, results. Uh, from Shaulai area, not only this city, but also uh, surrounding um, small towns. Uh, if you are entered a specific record, you can see the story of surviving, um, many details. Um, and here you can see, for example, that commemoration was on the wall of Honor. So several years ago, um, we didn't have already place for trees in the territory. It was established garden for writers, and the names are. Um, uh, put it to the wall of honor it's a very beautiful place and there are beautiful ceremonies which are conducted when a uh, person receives um, uh, this status writer among the nation uh, i want to mention survivors testimonies you can find some not everything uh, as i mentioned we are uploading uh, survivors information online uh, there are a first uh, 200 full testimonies already online in Hebrew, um, but we are trying to upload more uh, because it's very important for us to, to make it available. Sometimes we don't have right to upload and sometimes we don't, um, it, it's actually a, a privacy law issues because of that we still uh, didn't uh, complete this work, but uh, anyway, you can search in this database. Um, it's very comfortable for searching because when you type some specific uh, keyword, you're receiving exact moment in the interview where you can listen <clears throat> at this, uh, this word. In addition, there is a tool um, uh, connected to Google translation. Um, it's not really a good translation, but you can use it and uh, you can receive uh, translation uh, to different languages. Uh, if you want to search for general information uh, about specific uh, places or specific uh, topics or phenomena, you can search uh, in uh, Video Testimony Resource Center. There are small parts from different testimonies um, when survivors explain about some uh, events or phenomena. Uh, we also have, of course, a YouTube channel. Uh, you can uh, listen here our uh, lectures and also a lot of information and survivors' testimonies, and it's available. Um, a very important project that we have, and I just today realized that it, it exists uh, 10 years already. It's called Gather on the Fragments. 
It's actually started in 2011 as a national company uh, to, survive, to serve um, Holocaust-related materials. Um, Yad Vashem staff members uh, collect um, different kinds of materials, documents, photographs, artifacts, art materials um, connected to the uh, Holocaust victims and survivors that private people keep at home. There are a lot of materials in private homes still. And um, this is very uh, helpful uh, for families and for researchers. First of all, uh, it helps to preserve materials because at home, unfortunately, it's destroyed. And uh, uh, we have very good conditions for preserving and for keeping it. Um, it also uh, makes it available for public because it's scanned. Uh, uh, it's also uploaded online and um, very fast after receiving these materials um, available in the admission website. Um, you can read several stories uh, about important and interesting art, uh, artifacts or documents uh, received by uh, this project uh, on the page in the admission website, the story behind the artifacts. As I mentioned for us, it's very important not only to collect materials, the same is relevant about names, not only to collect, but to record the story. When our staff members meet with the don uh, donator of the material, they not only uh, collect this material, they uh, ask uh, the question and write the story that submitter of the material know, knows about this item. And it's very important because only the photograph is interesting and it's important, but it's, it doesn't tell the story of Holocaust victims this way. So we need to ask people what they know about it. Yad Vashem is also official copy holder of Arizon Archives, which is, uh, one of the largest databases related to the World War II. Uh, Archives uh, is in Germany, in the town called um, Badarizen. Uh, there are several uh, archives in the world who are uh, copy holders and Yad Vashem one of them. So we also um, can provide materials from Arizon database, but this is actually how to search in their databases is a separate lecture. So we don't have time to speak about that now. And I have to uh, mention that if you want to apply us, you are welcome to send email. Uh, you also can apply via our page uh, and the website, Reference Information Service. You can apply via email. Um, you can also ask for um, a virtual meeting now. Nowadays, uh, you know, in virtual period, we, um, uh, we opened virtual um, reading room. So we meet with our cli clients um, online in Zoom. Um, so you're very welcome to make an appointment, only pay attention uh, to time zone. And uh, if you're in Israel and you want to arrive, we last week, I'm happy to say that last week we opened uh, reopen the reading room. Uh, you need to make an appointment. Um, without that, you are not allowed to enter. But you are welcome to apply us. We are helping all the uh, uh, people who apply us. We are answering all the inquiries. It sometimes takes about a month, but we are answering all the inquiries. So you are welcome. And um, Abraham, I think this is the time for questions now. Seema, thank you so much. It was very Welcome. informative. Uh, there have been a lot of questions, some of them very specific. Um, so I don't think we're gonna be able to get to the very specific questions. Um, although I would mention for those type of inquiries, you could write to Yad Vashem, as Seema mentioned. You could also post general inquiries on the Jewish Gen discussion group um, to connect with researchers from around the world who might be able to help you as well. Um, here's a question. Um, someone has historical letters um, from Holocaust survivors and wants to know what would be the process for evaluation or inclusion in the databases of Yad Vashem? How might someone submit materials like that? Yeah, this is an important question. So as I, as I mentioned, uh, the, our department called Gather on the Fragments. Uh, you can apply there. Uh, the email collect at Yad Vashem 
um, maybe we can send via chat or just uh, search together the fragments at Yad Vashem, you'll find it very easily. You can apply them. Uh, if you want to donate original material, they'll explain how to send because it's it's impossible to send via usual post. You need, uh, they know what to, what to use. And uh, you also can scan and to send copies if you don't want to donate original material. It's also important. Uh, there's a question, is there any overlap between the documents that Yad Vashem has and, for example, the Holocaust Museum in Washington and other resources? Mm -hmm. um, there are some projects that when we work together with USHMM, um, uh, that means that there are some documents which are repeating uh, that are the same. Uh, Yad Vashem uh, has not only original documents, but also copies from different places. But uh, not all the documents the same. Right. And we have some documents and we have some record data sets that uh, over time we had worked on. So there are data sets in the Jewish Gen Holocaust collection that are also in, right. in the Yad Vashem collection as well. Yeah. Um, someone had a question about the pages of testimony. Maybe you could just remind people. Uh, there were a few questions about this. Maybe just to clarify, remind people how they can access specifically the pages of testimony on the Yad Vashem actually, data set. Yeah, actually to search by the name of the, of the victim and, and to see if there are pages of testimony about this victim. So this is not separate search, database. It's available inside the central database of fraud victims' names. Right, so someone would click on the digital collections tab on Yad Vashem yeah. and click on the first option which is Shoah Names Database. Shoah Names Database, and just to search by the name of the victim. Right, and then if there was an associated page of testimony, it would pop up within those results. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's do one more. It's a lot of, you know, I apologize, a lot of uh, personal questions, which- So I really suggest to, to apply to REF uh, email with the uh, specific questions about specific victims because it's impossible now to answer everybody. Right. Okay. I think that we will uh, wrap this up uh, now. And thank you for making the email accessible to people. There are a lot of uh, there are a lot of comments. Um, people are writing in to say thank you uh, for this presentation. And I would encourage everybody to uh, visit the Yad Vashem website, yadvashem.org, um, and to follow up on the resources that Seema described. There's a lot of information to search through uh, in their digital collections. Um, so I, I hope that you will all take advantage of what is available to you. Um, Seema, thank you very, very much for taking the time to be with You're us welcome. today. And as a reminder, this session has been recorded. And it will, we'll try to get it up in a few days and we'll post an announcement on the discussion group and on the Jewish genealogy portal on Facebook uh, when it's ready. So thank you again to everyone from around the world who has joined us, wishing you a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you, Abraham. And good luck everybody with searching. Take care. Goodbye.